Welcome to Generation Digital Workforce, the podcast that's here to explore the role of robotic process automation and other digital technologies. Whether you're just getting started or you're looking for advanced strategies and tactics, if you're curious about where human and digital workers are coming together to transform the future of work, then this podcast is for you. All right, let's get into the show. Hello and welcome to the Generation Digital Workforce Podcast. I'm Michael Marchuk, your host for today's episode where we have a very special guest from Baringa, Rob McGuire. Rob is a partner and he leads the People and Process Excellent Practice for Baringa. Welcome to the show, Rob. Welcome. Hi, Michael. So tell us a little bit more about yourself and your team at Baringa. Sure. So a little bit about me. So I started as a geologist uh, many moons ago, um, originally went into the water industry and spent a number of years overseas um, and then came back to the UK and went straight into into operation strategy as part of uh, what was um, IBM, sort of that PwC change sort of 15 years ago or so into their operation strategy team. And that's where I really started to focus in on Lean and, and, and Six Sigma and, and, and process improvement and, and really efficiency, helping clients and customers drive more value for less effort. Um, then moved across into a, into another business, KPMG, um, doing sort of operational due, due diligence, which is more around um, uh, cost reduction and, and, and working with any sorts of businesses that were primarily asset related, anything that was wearing and spinning. And then, and then eight years ago, I joined Beringa, and um, at the time I didn't know who, who Beringa were, but but um, to be honest, it's been one of the, the, the best things I ever did. I mean, um, the idea there was to to come in and join their process well set up their process transformation team and help help to do that and um, at the time uh, we were about 250 uh, consultants globally now um, Beringa is a business of 700 consultants um, and really we specialize in um, business and, and IT transformation uh, spread across global business so spread across the UK Northern Europe um, the US um, Middle East Australia and Singapore and really, um, what we tend to be is kind of focusing on on a number of chosen industries, so energy utilities, um, financial services, um, uh, some of the products and services around telco media and then government. And the team that I lead is is now, as you mentioned, people and process excellence. And so we have a reasonably broad remit in that we do everything from the process side, which includes um, process improvement, including obviously automation um, using um, vendors, vendors um, such as Blue Prism, through to um, how do we help companies um, create agile um, ways of working and how do they improve their ways of working, but also the people side um, linked to the cultural components of the of the business, how leadership think, um, how a business is organised, but also how do you sort of embed that change and and, and the adoption component. Excellent. Well, you've recently written an article um, called The Culture Key and uh, had some really interesting information in it and uh, a different twist to it in terms of viewing uh, uh, digital transformation. And we all know creating successful transformation programs are, are very difficult. According to your article, 70% of them fail. Why do you think that is? I mean, there's a variety of reasons why they fail, but um, I guess the big reason is that they don't deliver the benefit and the or, or the change they were expected to and and that can be a variety of reasons but I think something that does seem to play true is that often there's an ambition that's set um, we want to do this we want to achieve whatever it might be and that that's a, often a very good ambition there's a lot of time and effort that might be thought through from the strategic perspective or or, or, or the reasons why but then what happens is often companies jump straight to action let's let's get it done um and and they're missing two of the and then and then and then they'll just roll back into setting ambition again you know let's let's move on again they're on these cycles and and they're missing on that two-step model the intervening couple of other steps so so from ambition usually they they miss a translation stage so how how are we going to do this what's the impact going to be on our people um, have we got the right skill sets in the organization? How, how, how is that going to work? And then post the action, they're missing that sort of reflection of what did we learn? You know, what do we want to do differently next time? And let's kind of build that back into our future ambition. I often see companies just rotating straight from ambition to action and, and sort of missing the two, 
in, integral steps. And then I guess the other big one is around not bringing people on the journey properly and not getting that 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 complete buy-in. And, and sometimes that's linked to organizational challenges, but but I'd say that's the other the other major one. So yeah, that people aspect is uh, is what I want to kind of zoom in into a little bit here because your article really talks about this culture as it relates to transformation, which is not really something that gets talked about much. Obviously, startups have a very different you know feel to them when compared to larger, more established companies. But how does this um, this trans does this affect the transformation process within the established firms that are trying to do transformation? Yeah, and and startups, you know, they have this kind of entrepreneurial agility sort of built into their DNA. I guess um, you've often got leaders that are willing to take reasonably bold risks. Um, startups are often happy to to really bend themselves to the customer requirements. They're kind of in that sort of shaping um, mode, and they've kind of got a plasticity sometimes to their to their organisation. And over time. You know, the best ones will iterate until they sort of find their correct position in the business world. And of course, they don't just stay still. They then they then keep keep moving. I guess the challenge with established businesses that are often uh, is me envious of, of startup um, startups. And I've got a few um, clients that that use that word is that often uh, for a variety of reasons, they are, um, you know, there's a number of infrastructure components that are stopping that 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 agility sometimes it's linked to to it um and the infrastructure there but but more often than not it's it's the people and the and the mental systems that they that they've created around themselves and that can be process related it can be um uh sort of linked to um regulation and 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 and, and compliance but but ultimately it's those those constraints that that people are putting on the on themselves um and and i think that seems to be one of the one of the sort of areas that that often isn't explored as as much as it could be so obviously people are are sort of running with the change aspect of things but um when you look at this this culture piece again you know what's the essential ingredient to create that culture for a, a sustainable change i mean who should be driving it yeah yeah i mean when you think about how you create uh, the right levels of culture, obviously it's kind of aligned to that sort of initial sort of vision, vision and goals. But 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 really, it's it's the level below, which is purpose. Why do we exist? Have we got real clarity as to what our customer purpose is, um, rather than something that's that's linked to to our own internal internal purpose, and then sitting hand in hand with that is 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 values and you know does our values align to 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 that purpose but also does it align from an internal perspective around being that that business that we want to be and then aligned to that is is leadership and the fact that it's leaders that that set the tone off the back of those that purpose and values and then it's down to managers who really will then shape the experience and and it's obviously leaders and, and managers that they often don't understand the or recognize the the power that they have in in shaping this and the, and the leadership shadow that they they land across the across the organization um it's then that that sort of drives the the culture and behaviors and then and then underneath it is is really the the customer and employee experience that that will be witnessed as a result of that 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 sort of structure and you can measure that stuff you know you can you can obviously measure employee engagement you can measure customer satisfaction but that's very much a, a lagging indicator and it's much harder to, to measure the leading indicators around leadership and and um uh the sort of cultural changes that they can they can impose on a business it's interesting that you um you mentioned that from the top down not only does it affect the employees but that translates then into the customer experience too based on the culture of the company itself i think it's very interesting and probably not a lot of folks understand that that impact that that leadership can have on the customer experience um, as they're trying to do the change even internal toward the company sure sure and and the one of the, the big tools often around that is is that um 
customer demand is is changing rapidly at the moment you know and some of that's driven by the competitive landscape some of that's driven by um you know increase in technology requirements and and, and customers customer demand and, and expectations going up and so uh, the need for companies to be able to change and adapt is is just only accelerating and that means that you need to really embed into your business the ability to constantly shift and evolve in a, in a structured and, and, and measured and, 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 and organized way and and so it starts again with with leadership creating an environment providing that psychological safety for example to be able to test and learn and experiment and that there will be things that that are massively successful there'll be things that that maybe don't work so well but but it's what have we learned rather than well we tried that once before let's not do that again that's uh, very much like you mentioned that in the the startup culture piece where they're they're okay with failing that fail fast mentality where they'll try something to start with to see how it works and if it doesn't work as you just mentioned right maybe we don't do that again but they don't stop this is a just okay let's do the next thing let's try something different it's a it is embedded in our culture to to continue this evolution. It's does it does not a stop. We never reach a point of we're done. It's always that evolution. Completely, completely, and and, and it takes it takes a lot of um, institutional trust that that we all kind of understand where we're going. We've got real clarity around our um, North Star or, or Taipei Tower. You know, very very tall tall building that everybody can can orientate themselves around. But then. And then, and then behind that, we have the organisational clarity that means that we can we can move forward around that. Um, often, often a few of those things are missing, particularly around either the, the the trust component, the clarity around the purpose and the vision, and then and then that environment, that 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 um, empowered, psychologically safe environment around testing, which which. Um, which 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 can kind of allow companies to thrive. That's that's great. It was also also great great information. So your article also kind of mentions this concept of a hybrid workforce. Um, how can digital workers be successfully integrated into a firm who's looking to create that sustainable transformation? Yeah, uh, I mean, for me, the the question is focus on the worker component as much as you do the digital. I think. I think often um, uh, when we're talking about digital workers, um, you can get very wrapped up in the in the architecture and the and the design and 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 actually the creation of the of 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 the the content, and people forget that actually they're a, they're a worker, potentially a very powerful worker, but yet they still need managing, they still need supporting, they still need training and looking after, but but when you when you get them focused on the right thing then they're going to outperform um or, or, or you know, particularly from a human perspective on 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 certain tasks greater than your greater than your human workforce but it's not about um digital workers and then separate to to human human workforce it's about how do they integrate together so that they can they can complement each other that that makes sense. That makes total sense. So in your article, you had this great this great uh, line in there. It said, um, "You said rather than relying on two or three silver bullets to drive through change, Baringa believes that instilling operational resilience requires organizations to bed fifty silver pellets across the business." I thought that was great. Tell me more about what that means and how you see it working in real life. Yeah, I mean, and this has come from you know years of doing this stuff and, and some failures as well where we've been involved in in projects or been involved in transformation i've been involved in personally where where the whole ethos for it has been around um a, a particular ceo's vision or or a particular um goal or, or or something that we need to achieve and and it's a little bit like a like a, a stall if you if if one of those legs goes away the whole thing tips over and then the new CEO comes along, and the old, you know, the old, the old plans get get thrown away. Whereas, if if you believe that that 
um, we're on a consistent journey to improve and that the world is constantly changing and that we're not going to be the same. And these are pretty straightforward things to believe because they're, they're universally true. It means that if you can embed that that culture of improvement as as 50, 50 different pellets embedded in your business. And, and what that means is that even if one of them falls away, you, you just can't get it out because because that ethos is just just the way you do things around here and it's embedded into the organization and that can be everything from you know the 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 um the daily weekly and monthly clocks operational clocks that you've got turning in your business um it could be everything from how you um you know bigger than that how you how you hire and then how you in, in you induct people into the business through to the employee journey that they then go through all the way through to um, you know how, how people leave because you want to get to a place where you know for example you know people are going to leave your business but you want them to be proud that when they've left you know that was a that was a great company to work for and I enjoyed my time and I feel better as a person for it and I've I've moved on and can be a great advocate for for um, for that company elsewhere um, but that doesn't come from just a, a short term uh, you know two to three year journey it's it's about something much broader and much more endemic across all levels of your business and that is always going to be set around creating that environment and creating that that culture that um that 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 allows people to be their best excellent so what should executives be doing right now to help them embrace that that growth mindset that that culture that change of culture to help them build into their employees and and accelerate you know the adoption of of all of this digital transformation change um i mean it's it can be difficult for some executives because you've spent a life you know gaining knowledge and you're the expert you know you're the you're the person that's kind of got to a position of control and power that that has taken a huge lot of blood, sweat, and tears, but yet, um, the, the 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 very you know the challenge there is that, um, as I said before, things keep things keep moving and things are accelerating, and so the most important thing is that you stay curious, and recognise that, um, you know that you've, you you what you know is very small, and what you don't know is actually is actually far greater. So staying curious, and then communicating. I think these are the two the two really important tools and recognizing that that communication is is a two-way street it's it's equally as much about listening in fact probably a bit more about listening than it is just about um just about what you say and how you say it um i think these are the yeah for me this is the the kind of main the main embodiments of it and i think that's where you see real powerful powerful change also i guess it's about um engaging engaging your your the people that work for you uh it's not um it's not all about you just having all the answers and just having to be smarter and having to think clever and and be quicker it's about surrounding yourself with fantastic people that are often smarter and cleverer than you and and letting them uh set free to go and do what they need to do so your role there is to set the intent uh, uh and and then and then really sort of adopt a bit of a servant leader mindset we call it um which is which is where you're there to kind of clear the path and take away blockers that makes makes a lot of sense you're empowering um the folks that are on your team to be able to do what they do best right sure sure so what's um what's one thing that you hope that the listeners come away with as part of this 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 broadcast here what 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 things should they grab onto and say this is what i i, I remember from that that podcast i think the one thing for me is that you know transformation can 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 start at a variety of levels but ultimately it starts with with you as an individual and as a leader in your organization and it's about the influence that you have on on yourself your peers um your team and then and then and then those around you i think that's incredibly helpful um and that also it's not about um, a project or a program with a defined end really successful transformation has no beginning and an end it's it's a continual journey and um and and that's something that's just just um you know something that i think is just quite an important mindset change yeah, yeah i would i would agree with you there 
Well, Rob, I'd like to thank you for your very interesting insights into digital transformation. I, I really appreciate you joining me today. So until next time, I'm Michael Marchuk. Thanks for joining me on Generation Digital Workforce. You've been listening to Generation Digital Workforce. If you want to hear more about RPA, AI, and other cognitive technologies that are shaping the future of work, join us next time as we continue to go deeper on these topics with industry innovators and experts. To make sure you never miss a future episode, subscribe to the show in your favorite podcast player. And if you've liked what you heard today, please leave us a review. It's one of the best ways to help more people find valuable content. For show notes and more info, visit us at blueprism.com slash podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time.